Hi there, this is Tanya Smith from Oakdean Emporium and I'm here to do a short video on Wedgwood Jasper Wear. Um, Steve is my partner and he's behind the camera. Hello. And, and, <laughs> and um, we hope that this is going to be informative but quick. I don't want to spend too much time like we did on our first video. So um, let me begin on uh, Wedgwood Jasper Wear. We've got a range here that is from our own range that will be going up on our eBay store shortly after we do this video. Um, so we'll introduce you to the pieces that we've got available, but they're nowhere near the variety of Wedgwood Jasper Wear that's available out there. Um, Wedgwood Jasper Wear was started um, in uh, Staffordshire, Staffordshire, England, um, by a guy named Josea. Wedgwood. Um, by the time Josea was nine years old, he was already considered uh, an ex excellent potter because uh, he came from a, a family of potters. That's what the area in Staffordshire that he came from was known for. So he had all, he, all his brothers and his father were potters before him. Um, by the time he was nine, he was considered great, but shortly after that, he had a very serious um, attack of uh, smallpox and it, it's an extremely bad case that affected his legs terribly to the extent that his right leg had to be amputated um, and so he could no longer pr press a pe pedal on the um, potter's wheel so he had to sit around and figure out other things to do while his family were doing things so in his early 20s he spent all of his time basically reading, um, researching and experimenting and the result is what we have now, Jasperware. And Jasperware is actually considered by some, I think the quote is, let me see, uh, quoted as being considered perfection in ceramic art. And also um, it was, because it was released in 1775 and it blew everybody away. And he's, there's even a quote from his peers that said that Jasper Ware is the most important development in ceramics since the Chinese discovered porcelain more than a thousand years earlier. So that's how big a deal this stuff is. And it's still a very big deal. It's still considered perfection. So what it really is, is um, a, in layman's term, uh, fine grained, uh, can't think of the term, fine, uh, basically fine grained uh, chalky material that uh, has the appearance of the stone jasper um, and it was created at really, really high temperatures. So that, that, that's not really <laughs> a very good explanation on what it is exactly because he even, um, Josea admitted, he actually said that there were thousands of experiments that he did, literally thousands of experiments he did before he perfected Jasper Ware. Um, and everybody tried to copy them and no one's got it completely right since. Uh, so Wedgwood now, today, are still producing Jasper Ware and they are still considered the masters of Jasper Ware. There are a few out there, I could give you names, I'll probably put them up on the screen, of people that come close, but not exactly what they consider uh, the, the real deal. But Jasper Wedge does come in a lot of different colours. It was released in 1775, so the initial way that they used to do it was they would um, put metallic oxidising colouring agents into the clay, <clears throat> excuse me, and that would be like a solid mess. So when it came out, the whole piece of clay was coloured in the blue or the lilac or the green. They did black, they did yellow, they did royal blue. I think there's about 30 different colours that you can get from Jas in Jasper Wear. And what they did um, afterwards is they also did another technique where they dipped it afterwards and that is called dipping so you've got solid jasper wear and dip jasper wear 
and if you find the solid jasper ware you're looking at a really very very old piece um, and colour is one of the ways of determining the age of jasper ware. Now you'll see, I don't know if Steve can pick this up, um, I'll try and find a very very clear imprint, no, yeah we'll try this one. Yeah. So if you look at the back of that you will see it says Wedgwood made in England. Um, it's sort of like flows on from each other so you actually have like Wedgwood made in England. Older ones have Wedgwood up the top made in England down the bottom um, and that's one way that you can determine the age of a piece but it's actually quite difficult to age Wedgwood um, Jasper Ware because they didn't do a really good job of marking them. So if you look at the back of pieces, not a very good one again, but I'll try this one, you'll see that it's made in England and there is like a little D or a P on this one. They tried to do alphabetical things. So if you saw a D on your Jasperware, it would relate to 1860. E goes on to 1861, F 1862, you know, it goes on like that. But because they've been around for 200 years, they messed it all up because they got to the end of the alphabet and they didn't produce a, a better method. So they were just redoing A, B, C and G and none of it makes any sense anymore. There is a, a spreadsheet that you can find online that looks like that. I don't know how close it Steve can get. And that shows you some of the dates and the letters and the ages, but it's hard to tell. And you would need an expert if you're looking at old Wedgwood. Um, the kind of Wedgwood that we've got in front of us here, the latest would be the compact that I'll show you later. And that's probably early 1960s. The majority of the rest of it is, nothing here is um, older than the 1980s, most of the other stuff is in between the 60s to the 80s, but they're still producing today, so there um, is a lot of stuff that you can get in a lot of different forms. So you can get um, vases, plaques, tableware, uh, cameos, big, big collector's items, the compacts are huge collector's items, they did mounts on um, furniture. Uh, I haven't seen any of them for real and I don't understand how you would do that and not affect it because jasper wear is actually very fine. Um, it's thick and everything but just touching it, it feels delicate and so I think the furniture thing was for the mega rich people that didn't mind if it got some, uh, rubbed off or uh, scratched or the motifs that are placed on top of them um, ruined. But yeah. Uh, they also did um, a lot of, because it was the 1700s um, and the 1800s, they did, uh, what do you call them? Portraits, portrait mounds, mound portraits of people. So um, you can get a lot of them too. They are extremely rare and they are very, very nice, but incredibly expensive. If you're a collector, there are a lot of different elements of Jasperware that you could look at. Um, for the average Joe Blow, you would have something in the range of this. You can get multiple colours. I think I said, yeah, they're third, like 30 colours that they've got. Um, and they also, Josea had a real big thing for neoclassical. So if you look at the top of this, I don't know if Steve can show you. Yeah? Yeah. 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 You've got a neoclassical chariot so, um, scene. Uh, no, that one's not. That's the Pegasus. This is the, the chariot scene. Um, then you get more modern. So you can sort of tell by the ages that they're still going here with the cherubs, which is very much um, neoclassical. The, the people playing the lyre. Um, 
old Greek people in their, in their robes and stuff like that. Uh, still favoured for, for the last 200 years. But they, you can get things such as what we've got here, which is a golfer. <laughs> um, you get a female golfer, you get a male golfer, you can get a collection of Australian animals. Um, because they do a lot of series of things. I have another quote here from Josea and I think it's really quite informative um, and means a lot to hear what he went through and you sort of get it from this quote. He says, beautiful forms and compositions are not made by chance nor can they ever in any material be made at small expense. And so I think that says a lot. It's not about the, you know, I don't think it here he is talking about the expense of buying some of these items. I think the expense of the literal thousands of experiments that he did. Jose was a scientist basically um, and he was recognised later on by the, the Royal Society in England. They've recognised him because, and like I said they're still producing today. So what I'll do is I'll talk to you about some of the items that we're going to put up. Um, the first one I have written here is the mini plates. Now you'll see that there's three different mini plates here. Um, they're hugely popular, they come out in series. And this one over here, if you want to have a look at that, that one there is to com um, commemorate the 1982 birth of uh, Prince William. And so an item like that, round, not really a trinket, it's more of a display. Uh, you're looking at between twenty and thirty dollars. We're probably going to start it off at twenty because it's got that royal connection. Because you have the royal collectors as well, so they touch in on all those kinds of things. Um, then you have an item such as the golfer that I was talking about before. That one, not so uh, rare, not commemorating anything, just a depiction of everyday life and. Uh, Something like that would go for brand new. If you bought it, you'd probably be paying $40, but uh, second hand in perfect condition like this, I think we will be putting that up at a starting price of 10. Uh, so that, that's really within range of people who want to collect this stuff. Um, the other plate that we've got over here is, uh, it's, it's got the traditional holly. You'll often see a lot of the outlined plant kind of decoration is holly. Turn it to the camera. Turn it to the camera. Sorry, is that better? That's good. Thank you. Yeah. So you can, you'll see that it's got holly around it um, and other little um, flower arrangements. That's very common. You'll find that a lot. You'll see it on the candle holder that I've got over here. You see it on the trumpet urn slash flowers that I've got over here. So that's very common. But the, the shape of this being diamond shaped um, actually is part of a set about playing cards. So this is one piece of the set. The other pieces are the hearts, the spades and the clubs. And so they have that shape made out in these miniature um, plates. But to have the full collection of this particular one, this is one part of it. And what have I put it down for here? Um, this would start at $10. <coughs> And if you're lucky enough, you'll find the hearts, the clubs, and uh, the spades as well. There are different sets in different colours, and colour often determines how much more expensive this thing is. So you've got your pale blue, but if I have seen full sets of the card collection going for $400 because they're in like a lush green colour or something like that so rarer colours make it more expensive but if you collected that set and you then wanted to resell that set of the card collection um, and you got each item for say ten dollars uh, you've spent forty dollars and you could easily make a hundred off that so they're good investments as well um, we've also got uh, the trinket boxes which we've got two of them here but one in the lilac um, and they're usable but many people don't use them <laughs> you can put things in them they are something that can be used but a lot of people just like to put them on their dressing table I guess um, so if you look at this um, trinket box that I've got over here um, you'll see that the, the front cover 
is the Pegasus. Um, it's the got camera. five lobes. Sorry, is that right? That's great. Hang on. Yeah. Yep. And you'll see on the bases you've got children playing, and they, they, they are on every lobe of this five lobe piece. So this is a really sweet trinket box. Um, it's a different shape, so it makes it a bit more desirable. Um, it's in perfect condition. And what have I put down for this? So the trinket box for the lobes, that would be probably be selling at a starting price of $20 um, when we put it up in the next few days. This one, because it's lilac, and it's got a different shape again, so it's a crescent shaped. You see that? So you've got um, on the front, I've forgotten, yeah, you've got the chariot one. This is the chariot one. And you'll also see around the sides, again, the children playing. Very um, neoclassical in design. Uh, and because that's of a different colour, um, that would probably start, and much rarer, lilac, that would probably start at about $40. Um, so yeah, they're still within range of the, the everyday collector. Okay, we've got the candlestick holder. Okay, this is one. They mainly usually come as two. Um, this is if you wanted to collect just Jasperware candlestick holders, you have such a variety. It's ridiculous. Um, people would just collect the candlestick holders. They usually get one or two depending on the size. You can get huge ones with bamboo designs and different colours and glazed and unglazed and all this sort of stuff. But um, you also get a lot with the traditional holly around the edges, so that sort of neoclassical look. Um, it's quite plain but quite lovely at the same time. Does that show up well on the camera? Yes, it's beautiful. Yeah, so I will put that up as a starting price of ten dollars. Because of the colour is the pale blue, the most common colour, and it's a one-off. And the little ones you usually come in sets of two. Then you've got the urn over here. So the urn's pretty cool. It comes with a little booklet from Wedgwood um, telling you about its history and how to care for your Jasperware and all that kind of stuff. This is probably from 1980. Um, 84. Five at max, you know, it's somewhere in between there. So it's got the cherubs pick around. Up, pick it up Can you see it. the cherubs? Yeah, you pick it up and show it in the light. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, Sorry about the light, we were we've got time a lot, so we do no, it just in turn a, it around so people can see it. Turn it around in circles? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, you've got cherubs doing different things. It's a really pretty thing. So, some good people call it a trumpet urn. That is its proper name. Other people call it just a trumpet vase. It's the same thing. Um, how tall are these ones? So to give you a proper idea, I have written that down. So that's eight and a half centimetres tall. And it's eight and a half centimetres wide at the top. And it's five and a half at the bottom. So it's only a, a small little thing. Um, but it's desirable. And they are pretty, I wouldn't say rare, but in Australia, Australia's got a lot less of this stuff. A lot of people that are buying Jasperware are buying it from overseas and bringing it into Australia. So this would be at a starting price of about $45 because you can't really find them here, so it's a well sought after item. Still cheap though, um, like I said in the last video, we try to be um, undercut uh, everybody that's out there um, within reason. And so, yeah, $45, I think if you checked up on eBay, anything in Australia, I'd find, you probably won't find one. But overseas, you'll see them going for 60 bucks, something like that. Okay. And the last one is the most adorable one, I just love it, <laughs> is the compact. So, there's a huge thing um, on collecting compacts. And this is a Stanton, a Stanton or St a Stranton, S T R A T T O N, Stranton Compact. If you just went on Pinterest and put in Stranton Compacts, the designs that are out there are just amazing. I just love some of them. 
they are absolutely beautiful and they cover every aspect. Uh, they really um, are a great organisation in themselves. Sure. I'll just show you the back. So it's all gold. Um, it's got the Stranton mark on the ins on the back there. You can hold that up a little more. Yeah. And they were the first ones to invent the flip sorry, top lid on a compact. I'm just holding it still for one moment. Right? Yep, I'm sorry. That's go. fine. I'm going to turn it around and just straighten it up so yep. we can get a better look at it. So that's... And just straighten it up a bit. Yep. That's the section that is the Jasper wear. Okay. So they are also very rare to that's find. A it's a beautiful little light. It is, and it's not been used, so that's another beautiful thing. So yeah. Stranton invented the flip top um, compact, and the reason they did that is because they didn't want ladies to chip their nail polish oh, so when opening see. it. And so, as you, you can see, it's got the leaflet. Sorry? Can you turn it up so I can see the leaflet? Yes. I'll open it up like that. Does that help? Yeah. Okay. So That's it's great. got the mirror, it's in perfect condition. It's got the original paper inclusion there. It has a little button on the side here. So sorry, I'm left-handed. I'll do it on left -handed. So there's a little button on the side here that you push that way. And it releases this bit. I'll do it with two hands. <laughs> releases this bit. There we go. So the little buttons there, as you can see, it releases this bit and you can put your makeup in there. Now the only thing that is wrong is because this was made uh, probably in the late 1950s to the early 1960s, the sponges have deteriorated. So they're still there, everything is... <laughs> <laughs> Everything is there that's just sponge residue, but the original thing is there. Have a look at the sponges quickly, and you hold that up. Yep, so oh, that's the front. Yep. Yep. And that's the back. Okay. As you can see, this one's deteriorated. Yep. But the good news is, is because there's so many compact collectors out there, um, they say that if you use Max Factor, um, Max Factor have uh, the same size um, powders and compressed mineral um, powders that you can put in one of these compacts and still be able to use it. Okay, So I'll put that back there and I'll put that little bit of sponge right there. And I'll close that up. Also, um, these items are also in perfect condition too, there's no chipping or... Yeah, absolutely. Um, they're I'll, all pristine. I will point out if there's ever anything such as the compact um, sponge. Yep. Any, any kind of thing that goes wrong with any of our items, we will definitely tell you. It's pointless not. You're going to get it if you buy it. And tell yeah. yourself if you didn't get it the way you expected. So, well, Tanya yeah. and I have baked an emporium and pride ourselves on quality. Hmm. And the best possible price. Yeah. Um, there's a good story about Stranton too. Stranton were huge and this is what they did from the beginning compacts. World War II came, they had five fact factories and during the Blitz four of them got bombed and destroyed. Basically put them out of commission because after the war any metals were really hard to come by so they basically weren't allowed to do anything when they started back in action, they used um, alloys that they found, you know, um, from bombing the materials that were left after the bombing um, to make their compacts because they couldn't buy any. But if you go and have a look at some of their stuff, the artwork is just fantastic. Um, I love them. <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> yeah, so, fun. yeah. Fascinating uh, fact. Yeah. So, um, that compact, unused, um, is Stanton and Wedgwood, and it is about, because it's the golden blue, again, blue being the most common one, this will start at about $80 um, for, the, uh, for the auction. Um, if you look them up, you will find that 
you can find used ones and they are much much cheaper if it's with that you're okay to have the used ones you could probably pick up one for thirty dollars it's been used but they will have scratches and you know muck all over them and all that sort of stuff so this one being in perfect condition 80 bucks is a steal absolute steal <laughs> <laughs> so yeah um I'll try and splice into, when I make this video, I'll try and splice in some of the pictures of the old stuff that um, Wedgwood did with the Jasper Ware. Some of it's just extraordinary. You've got things that are, you know, person high. Um, you've got urns that, you know, sit on the side of your, your doorway kind of stuff um, in Jasper Ware, which is, feels so delicate, but it clearly must have some, some um, life in it. And the other thing I haven't told you is the stuff that is on the top of the motifs, that is all made out of Jasper Ware as well. So Jasper Ware is initially white, and so they put the, the reliefs on um, afterwards by moulding them and then putting them on, and uh, they don't, don't change the colour. So that is the um, real colour of what Jasper Ware is when you look at the white. Okay, so yeah, find all your colours, the more colourful, or um, that because the colour is probably the best way to date because colour changes. So if you find a piece and you want it authentic, um, authenticated, talk to Wedgwood because they're still around and um, they'd be able to say, okay, that colour went out in 1892 <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> or something like that. Um, so yeah, just simple shade changes will be able to date something. Um, otherwise, it's hell of a, a, an activity trying to date these things. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've got any questions, please um, email us. We've got a Facebook page where we, I put up when they're already online. Uh, and if you have any questions, you contact us from the Facebook or you can contact us from the um, YouTube channel. So this is video number two. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learned something. Um, and I hope that you get into Jasperware or compacts or candlesticks, whatever it is that blows up your skirt. Go for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. See you later. Hi there. I forgot to tell you something. Fun fact. Josiah Wedgwood is the grandfather of Charles Darwin. Ta-da! Ta-da!